So hello, how have you been? Oh, I've been very well, thank you. How about yourself? COVID, you know, COVID's been crazy over here in New York. Literally, like, oh my God. Yeah, I thought, I heard that things were sort of improving in, in the New York. Yeah, yeah. things are yeah. improving, but it's like, you know, I, I wish for like everything to just like get better by like the spring and summer because it's been so hard. Like, you know, people have lost so many loved ones. Um, it's been crazy. Uh, yeah. So you are incredible. Okay. I know this might sound really weird to you, but um, <laughs> your swing songs, um, I actually do contemporary dance and stuff. They're actually yeah. really fun to do like, you know, a little bit of my stuff too. So I don't know cool. if that's like weird or whatever, but like, you're like Frank Sinatra level. Like your oh. voice is insane to me. So I just want to oh, say like so kudos to that because incredible. So um, I think viewers would love to know just a little bit of like a superhero origin story, you know, where you're from and stuff like that. Like how did okay. you get into acting? And then now we're into music. Yeah, well, I actually uh, was pursuing music before acting. I grew up in uh, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Oh my God! Brooklyn. Really? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I grew up in the Flatbush section of Brooklyn, and I went to Erasmus Hall High School, where uh, Barbara Streisand went, and Neil Diamond went there for for a, while, a lot of famous people. And um, I was about uh, thirteen when I started going for lessons in in Manhattan for singing and acting and some dancing. Uh, dancing wasn't my choice, but that it kind of came along with <laughs> everything. Were you good at dancing? A, not really. I'm, you know, <laughs> I can get by if if uh, somebody's working with me on something for a while. <laughs> okay. But, but I'm not a natural in that respect. But, um, but the singing, you know, so it was singing and acting I was very interested in, mm. and especially singing because I was, when I was nine years old, I saw a movie called The Jolson Story which was a biopic about the great Al Jolson, who was considered back in his time, the world's greatest entertainer. And he actually made the very first talking movie called The Jazz Singer back in 1927. But this was a movie about him played by Larry Parks, but it was Jolson's voice on all the songs. And I was nine years old and it just had a very strong impact on me. I loved, I loved the music. I loved his his talent came through in his voice. You know, I loved his singing and the music, all the great standards. And and um, my mom grew was a teenager during the swing era and young adults. So I had she had some swing albums, you know, from some right. of the great uh, orchestras of the day back then. You know, whether it be Glenn Miller or Count Basie or Duke Ellington, all of those. So I'd heard some, I'd heard a lot of that, but then seeing Jolson really did it to me and then I wound up watching the movie like 10 times after that that week because it was on every night and um and then I got his albums and I started singing you know I'm nine years old you kind of fangirled a little bit (laughs) (laughs) just a little bit yeah yeah and then um and then and then by the time when I was 13 uh my parents knew how much I wanted to kind of pursue it so that's when I started going for these classes and and it led to me singing I got picked to be in this nightclub review of uh, of teenagers we there were seven of us ages 14 to 16 and and I was uh, so I spent the summer in the Catskill Mountains which at the time was a big resort area upstate New York all these hotels with nightclubs and and um so I spent the summer uh, performing at all the different hotels uh, in this nightclub review and I was it was just turning 15. So wow. that's how it that's how it all started. And then I switched my focus really into acting um, the next year. I just it was a major switch. I started watching, I was seeing all these great movies and uh, and I, I I was inspired and influenced by people like Jack Nicholson when he was just oh, starting wow, out. And, amazing, yeah. And Dustin Hoffman, of course, and and Paul Newman back then, and so and so many others. And then I really got serious about the acting and I went into a different class that was mainly, you know, it was more serious on the acting side. So um, and I was about 16 when I entered that class. And uh, and then I you know, started working. I started getting, I was able to get an agent through the 
uh, class, the uh, acting teacher knew a, a, a manager actually that handled uh, teenagers and kids and mm -hmm. and she took me on and started sending me out. Uh, I, I got out on a lot of commercials back then that, you know, and wound up doing a lot of national commercials. I did in the next four years, I did like 40 commercials. Oh, wow. So I, so I was really, you know, getting a lot. And while, and I was going to college and commuting from Pennsylvania to Manhattan for these auditions. It was crazy, you know? Um, and then I went up after four years and uh, I went up to LA after my junior year for the summer, just for the summer. But then um, I started getting work, you know, I started getting, uh, going on auditions and getting some jobs and decided to stay in LA, take six months off of school and, you know, see what happens. And, and then I just got more work, more work, and then got happy days. So I never made it back from my senior year. <laughs> you know, but you've done so many incredible things. I think something that um, I want to ask is on your first like uh, singing class, like was there anything that like really like you felt like, like this set me up, especially in your acting classes? Because like there's always those little things that like nobody shares, but I think people might find it interesting that like stood with you, like, you know, uh, use your voice like this or don't do that. Oh, oh, I see. Did I learn anything? I'm trying to think of very... like set you up like you think about oh. it still to this day. Oh, I see. Oh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I'd have to think and singing. I don't really know that I I got any single thing like that um, uh, because, you know, I, I went to after that, I studied voice uh, a few years later with a different teacher, totally different teacher that and taught. She taught even opera singers. And then when I was in L.A., I, I studied with. Um, two other voice teachers. So I, I can't remember any, any one thing, but I think in acting, I mm. would say the thing that really stood out for, for me, and it was, and, and it took a long time to really even, even though I might've understood what this man was saying, in order to uh, integrate it and assimilate it and actually do it, took me a while. And this was the director of Happy Days. His name was Jerry Paris. And he had, uh, been an actor himself. That's how mm -hmm. he started. He he was in a movie, The Wild Ones, with Marlon Brando. He was in a movie with Humphrey Bogart, uh, oh, wow. uh, Kane Mutiny. He was in the movie Marty with um, Ernest Bo Bo Borgnine, who won the Academy Award for that movie. And, and Jerry played his brother-in-law. So he came, you know, he, he was a very experienced guy. And then he was directing all the Dick Van Dyke shows. And then we were lucky enough to have him as a director. He became almost like a mentor to me. He really liked what I was doing and, and, and we liked each other a lot. I, I mean, all of us got along, but, but he was kind of like my uncle, he became. And he used to say to me, and this is the thing that I guess set me, you yeah. say set, set me up, is he said, you, you just have to trust yourself. Because he was like saying, oh. you, you know, you've done, you know, you know what you're doing. You know, I've, I studied, I went to class. And I've done and I did a lot of work. So I had some experience and he was like seeing me doubting myself. He was trust seeing your ability. Me, yeah. To really just trust the ability oh. and, and not and not be in my head so much trying to control anything or to because in acting, you have to yeah. kind of be in the moment and be really in that moment to moment to moment to moment as opposed to uh, watching yourself doing it. Yeah. And, you know, judging yourself. So that was the biggest lesson, I think, um, the most important one to to really get to that point of trusting and then being able to let go. I think that's like highly important, though, because like when you're acting and like you're thinking of every single line you have to say, you're almost like becoming like a statue, like you want everything to flow. So that little piece right. of advice is highly impactful to, I think, a lot yeah. of people who will replay this and be like, taking notes, taking notes. Yeah. So, OK, yes, I need to know what your favorite role is. Redhead to redhead, New Yorker to New Yorker. I got to know. <laughs> I got to know. My, you my had the most role. fun. You felt like you just immersed yourself in the role. Yeah, that's a that's a you know well of course the role I did on Happy Days is is you know, always up there yeah uh, up there at the top, but I'd say there in, in recent years I've gotten a chance to do some really interesting roles in in some um, 
nice independent films where they're very different than myself and different from other roles I've played. So um, I guess I, I would say, oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> You're like, I wasn't prepared tough. for this, Lily. It's, it's tough because on stage, on stage, I once did a play a long time ago called Wait Until Dark. Okay. Where I played, where I played the uh, sort of psychopathic uh, k uh, killer. Okay. And, uh, so that was, it was such a stretch, but I, you know, I, I really felt good about what I did. But on, and more recently, I'd say the, the movie Lost Heart is right up there. Um, I did that a few years ago and it's on Amazon Prime right now. Cool. And I, I'll check I, it play out. A, I play a small town pastor. And, um, and it's a very different kind of role, but uh, it's a beautiful script. And the other, all the actors in it were great. So um, Lost Heart is one that I've really, uh, I, I definitely immersed myself in, in that character. Now, so that would be one. The slasher, though. I, I got to know a little bit more about the slasher. Yeah. Like, yeah. you go up to the screen like. <laughs> well, it wasn't, it, it wasn't that kind of a, it wasn't that kind of a play. It was a famous play made into a movie that starred Audrey Hepburn and she and and she plays a blind woman and and the the killer or the the villain of the piece hmm. in the in the movie was played by Alan Arkin who was amazing in it Robert Duvall did it on on the play in the play version um so it's more of a psychological thriller it's not oh, okay you see so so it's kind of like this mind game and uh, uh, this 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 duel between a uh, duel of minds between this blind woman and this guy who's who's he's invaded her home. He's preying on he's, her. He's looking for something, and it's very and he thinks that they're hiding. He's looking for something that he had stashed on her husband's uh, in her husband's uh, su suitcase or something, and now he's trying to get it and and. So it's this battle of wits between the two of them that goes on for a long time. And it's, it's very, it's very um, suspenseful and great writing. And, and to play this character was such a, you know, at the time I did it, I was doing Happy Days and this was during an off season. I mean, during the off season. So I was able to do some theater in between. Really so, cool. so here I was, you know, still known from Happy Days. And then here I'm playing this like crazy different character. And um, I really I see you look so excited well, about it. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a challenge, but I really felt great about what I did, and I did immerse myself in, well, <laughs> not too completely because you know, I didn't want to <laughs> but go just over enough, the, just enough to make it entertaining yes. to people and right. yourself. So, music wise, let's go to now. Okay. Uh, what made you decide, like, you know what, I'm going to just fully just like go on stage. And do this and do the singing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the albums. Well, I mean. Yeah. Well, what happened was, uh, as I mentioned, I started out really doing that first, you know, when I was hmm. singing in those nightclubs. So that was my first love, I like to say. And and it was in my blood. And I've and I've been singing that music, even though I put it aside uh, for the most part, when I focused on acting, there were times when it came into play when I did some musical theater and the singing was involved. And so I. I did that. And then every once in a while, I might have done, uh, you know, some singing at like a, a charity event or a telethon, something like that, and on TV a few times. But I wasn't seriously pursuing it until what happened was, you know, I loved the Great American Songbook and the jazz standards and swing and big band and all of that. So I'd be singing that all the, you know, by myself and all for years, you know. And then I finally, seven years ago, I think it hit me. I, I, had, I had been in the hospital for something. I had to have some surgery and, and I was in the hospital for like 17 days. Oh. And, then, and then I came out of there and because looking back, now I realize when, when it happened, it was not too long after that when I remembered saying to myself, you know, if I'm ever gonna do the singing, um, I, you know, I'm not getting any younger, that I, I better start. Trust you your know, ability. It's coming back yeah. to you. Trust your ability. Yeah, oh and do God. what I want, you know, do what I still have passion for. Well, I yeah. still had a lot of passion for. And 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 also because, you know, the music that we're talking about hmm. was, was, was during the 70s, 
when Happy Days was on in the early 80s, it wasn't really in favor that much. It was looked upon as like, you know, Sinatra and that was looked upon as like my parents' music or my grandparents' music. But then it started coming back into vogue again, you know, when Harry Connick started doing it in, in Harry Met Sally, he, you know, his songs. And then people like Natalie Cole and Tony Bennett, of course, and, um, and Diana Krall, who I love. And more and more people, all of a sudden it was like becoming in, in cool to do that music, which I always loved. So I'm like, oh, it's great. This music is back. It's not going to be like trying to beat my head against a brick, mm -hmm. brick wall to do this kind of music. And now's the time. So, so I put together an act, you know, I, I picked out the songs, uh, a, a man who I knew that I worked with, I picked him to be my musical director. And, and, and then we started off, I was able to get a booking at a jazz club in Los Angeles called Vitello's. And um, that was my first nightclub gig, you know, so to speak. And it went great, you know, it was just, it was a blast. It was a total blast and everyone's going, wow, we didn't know you could sing like this and you know all yeah that. yeah honestly um you know at first people say they're singers and you're like well, all right but when i heard <laughs> you sing i was like i i i feel that like from your stomach up like that <laughs> that sinatra sort of like hey, and i was like <laughs> did that just come out of his mouth <laughs> like incredible right. voice i was oh, like oh you. my goodness so, oh, thank um, you so that, much. I that definitely is that. really cool yeah and then i did an album a few years ago uh, with this all the great jazz standards with a wonderful group of of jazz of L Los Angeles jazz studio musicians and it's a big band sound 17 piece band and in some cases more with strings and everything so uh, that's called uh, most D most mostly swinging is the name of that CD on iTunes and Amazon and I'm working on another one right we were almost oh. finished but I was, I'm working with a producer in, in the Nashville area. And cool. it's, and it's different. It's going to be different. It's still going to be jazz standards, but instead of the big band, it's a more contemporary jazz setting, you know, like just the nice rhythm section, guitar, piano, bass, and drums. And, and maybe there'll be a saxophone on this song or maybe a trumpet solo here. So it's a more contemporary jazz kind of feel, but it's go, coming along great. And then when COVID hit, we, yeah. we couldn't finish. So um, I'm going to, to Nashville in about three, ooh, about a month, in about a month to finish it. And I'm really excited because oh. it'll come out sometime this year. So, um, you know, I must say I like Clementine. That's kind of like something that I like. Oh, um, what would be like your favorite song from your album? That one, from the, the 2017 album? one. Wow, yeah, that, well, Clementine's up there, you see, because I was, besides Sinatra, who I, of course, love, I was a huge Bobby Darren fan and Bobby could do that kind of music. I mean, Sinatra was kind of his idol and Bobby could do that. I saw him at the, at a nightclub in New York city called the Copacabana, the famous Copacabana nightclub hey. when I was, when I was 18. So I, uh, I loved B Bobby and that he did Clementine on uh, his second big album called this is Darren. And I used to sing along with that all the time. So I had to do it on my Oh, that's so awesome. So I'm glad you picked that one out. Yeah, no, I it love out. it because when you like contemporary dance or like, you know, you're um, warming up because like that's kind of how I like to warm up. You know, you like kind of get into it and it's like really <laughs> cool and fun and it's nice to see something new, like not something yeah. like, you know, old. It's just like a new song, fun yeah. and different. And I love that. Yeah, so, yeah that, um, that's definitely, I'm, if I had to pick another one, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> You're like going know. down the list. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I love After You've Gone. Um, it, okay. might not be, it might not be as popular as some of the other songs to people, but, but I was really happy with uh, That's a great old song that Al Jolson used to do. You know, it's from the 20s. Um, so After You've Gone is up there. And then maybe um, Day In, Day Out, I like a lot also. But I love them all, so it's you know it's hard. Well, obviously, they are your songs. I am curious, why are you going for more of a contemporary with the new one coming up? I'm not hating it. Um, I just like I'm curious. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's still going to be the jazz standards, you know, songs mm -hmm. that I love. It's just a different approach, a little different feel. Just like mm -hmm. I sometimes, I as a jazz uh, audience, sometimes I would want to go and hear a big band 
you know, really going crazy. We used to go see Buddy Rich with his big band all the time when I was younger. So sometimes I'd love to see that. But then also there'd be times when I'd be into seeing, you know, um, a great saxophonist with, with a rhythm section and, or a trumpet play and a smaller group. And it's a, it's a different, uh, a little more subtle, a little different kind of um, things that you could do in that setting, more intimate than you can with the big band, you know, the big band. Yeah. So it's just a, it's like, okay, you know, I like chocolate, but I also like <laughs> coffee, coffee flavored ice cream. Too, yeah. You know? Do you <laughs> actually play instruments too? Cause like, you know, a lot about like, you know, all this stuff as well. Yeah. I played piano a little bit when I was younger. So I know, you know, enough about it so that I could understand some of the things that, mm. you know, the musicians are, and the, and the, uh, arrangers are talking about but I don't play well enough to to really perform it you're like um, eh, I'll just use my voice it's no problem yeah, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely what would you give as advice to any young musicians or actors out there oh wow okay um I guess what when people ask me that and it, usually it's about acting but I, you're, you're right it could apply to both yeah, um, it's important. Musicians, what, it's showmanship. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I usually tell people is, is that um, because the if they want to do it just, you know, for fun, that's one thing. If you want to do it just because you, as a hobby, that's one thing. But if you're wanting to do it as a career, I would tell young people, aspiring actors, that the business is so crazy and sometimes it's very unfair and it could be cruel and very difficult and so I said unless you really love it and this is what you have to do and you know you wanted you have to do it if you don't have that kind of feeling I say don't even don't pursue it as a career because it's so hard and crazy and you have to be willing to go through you know so you just and then if you do then okay go all out you know, and study with somebody good and try to get in some plays because theater is the greatest training for actors and try to work with good people and keep learning and just keep doing it. And, you know, and then uh, and and try to hold on to that belief in yourself, which is the most yeah. important. Now, speaking about like hardships, because obviously, you know, acting or singing, there's going to be a lot of naysayers, haters. And, you know, my I myself have dealt with a lot of people who are uncouth. Let's just let's just say uncouth. Sure. Um, so, what would be you would say the biggest hardship of your career that you overcame? Since we were okay. talking a little bit about, like you know, it, it can get very yeah. hard. Yeah, good question. Um, it was very difficult for me after um, I left Happy Days because yeah. the show was so popular, uh, and I left four years before it ended. The show ran eleven seasons, and I. After my seventh season, my contract was up, and and for various reasons, I decided not to to renew. Same thing, Ron Howard didn't uh, come back either because he was wanting to pursue directing. Which wonder what ever happened to that? <laughs> no, I mean, he he did okay. Ron did pretty good. Um, amazing what Ron did. So I I felt I knew that I was getting so associated with the show and with this character. Because remember, back then there was no cable, there mm. was no internet. So when people were watching TV, it was mainly the three networks, either CBS, NBC, or ABC. And that was it. So when we were number one, we had 50, 60 million people watching us on Tuesday nights. So, you know, you get very associated in the cast. industry. Yeah, typecast. And the industry has a tendency to do that more than the public. Public, I would say, oh, when are we going to see in something else? But the people in the industry play it very safe and close to the vest. It's like, oh, no, no, he's this type and he, he's not right for this, you know, that kind of thing. So it was very difficult um, uh, p- a period for me to, to break out of that and, and show that I was an actor playing a role that was not like myself because the character I played was, I was really not very much like that character. But I had to like now prove that and then prove that I had range to do many other things. So it took a while, you know, and I'd peck away at it and peck away. But there were times when I started, 
you know, going, God, God, it was, you know, am I ever going to be able to get past this? And am I oh, going to be able to do the kinds of roles that, that I've wanted to do? And am I going to be able to get work? You know, so it was, a, it was some, there was some soul searching and, and, and difficult challenges during that period. But I just kept pecking away in this slow, you know, I get a guest role in something very different you know, where I, uh, I did a Star Trek Voyager two-parter and I played Ooh, sort of the, 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 you know, Yeah, so that was very different kind of role. And then I played a psychiatrist in some other show and and then a, a hard metal rocker in, a, in another Wait, show. what? And, what? Yeah, yeah, well, they had, no. they had me like the, I had all the makeup. I had all the makeup and oh. long hair. And you, you go check it out on YouTube. Uh, if you look up, it was an episode of Chips. The show okay. Chips, uh, and and look up uh, Moloch was my character's name. Moloch. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited to see this because <laughs> you're going through it. I'm like, oh yeah, I can see him in that. And then you're like, rocker. Yeah, yeah. You said, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you ch- check that out. And and then and then you know and then I started doing more and more independent films and playing lots of different kinds of roles. So it started, you know, besides Lost Heart, like I told you, I played a defense attorney in this very heavy film called Man's Best Friend. And um, that's on Amazon Prime too. And then I played a polygamist in, in another film, you know, like one of the fundamentalist Mormons that, that were practicing polygamy. So, and then I played a king and then I played a prison oh, that's guard. Fitting, and, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, why not? Yeah. So, so, that I'm, I'm loving the playing all different the diversity that of roles that I'm getting to play, but like I said, it was um, when you asked what was the the, yeah. the, or the toughest toughest the hardship that you had to get over. Uh, back when I left, it was like 1980 81 when I was off of happy, when I left Happy Days. So the, those the next few years, and one thing that helped a lot too is I did a lot of I did some theater during that time because that keeps you, you know, keeps you sharp and keeps that, um, there's nothing Fire, like being fresh. Yeah. And keep that muscle going, keep like working out your, you yeah. Know, going to, yeah. Stretching like your going. abilities. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about typecasting today as opposed to back then? Cause you I, know, it's still happening. People who play like a uh, superhero roles, they're like, Oh my God. And like the guy who played, um, Aladdin, he cannot get any roles. They're like typecasting him as Aladdin oh, now. Yeah, I guess I imagine it still happens. I, I guess it it depends on what role you hmm. you know you break out in, and some some are harder to shed than others. You know, some some are tougher. Uh, the one thing that's easier than that's better now, easier and better, is that back then when I was doing the show, if you were on a TV show. It was very, very rare and hard for you then all of a sudden to be doing films. Back then, it was like, you know, TV and film, it was like almost a separate, yeah, separate, uh, separate yeah. kind of a, uh, a class, you know, it was like you were in a different class. And we didn't, the actors didn't think that way, but that was the sort of the industry sort of, oh, you know, they only wanted to cast people who were known from films. T- today, you, the film actors are doing TV shows. Yeah. The actors in television shows are doing films. It's like a bridge between the mediums, where back then it was much harder. And so, very few people made that transition. So like definitely, that. what would you like to see um, improved in Hollywood standards? Since you're oh. clearly quite very passionate <laughs> about this part, you know. Yeah. Um, wow. In, well, I, I I think, like I said, they are opening up more so to to people being able to play, you know, not only TV and film, but also yeah. different kinds of characters. I think that there's a little bit more of an open mind. So, but like you pointed out, it's still the cast, the, the typecasting still does exist. So, you know, I, I guess just to give pe- more people people like that a, a little bit more of a chance somehow it's very hard though because the competition is so fierce you know there's so many people trying out for these roles that that's why it makes it hard for them to sometimes they'll take the easier way out you know and 
and oh, it's very easy to cast this person because he's known for that. And it's very easy to cast this person. It's a yeah, little bit harder for them to cast somebody that's not, you know, they, they go if they, if they saw go out people, on a limb. Yeah, if they saw people for their ability, <laughs> you know, what they could right. do, I think um, that would be a really nice change. I think that'd be really good. Yeah, yeah. If they're if they're a little more open to to letting people have a chance to show yeah. something different other than what they're known for. Yes. Yeah. Don, this has been incredible. Um, oh. We know you have something new coming. So is there anything else you could say about that? Or no? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well, there are, there, you know, I've directed three independent oh, films. Really? Yeah. Oh. What, one is called uh, back, you know, some time ago, one is called the last best Sunday. It's on Tubi. You can watch it. So it's a really very dr- nice dramatic film uh two teenagers a uh, male and female it's kind of a interesting almost a little romeo and juliet kind of a story mm-hmm. and um really really great acting in it um the last best sunday and then i did one called mula m-o-o-l-a which uh fe- i cast and gave her her first film role it was shailene woodley who oh. you probably know who shailene is so um she was 13 when she did mula for me and um, and now I'm I'm attached to direct two films, and we're trying to get you know get it set up, get all the money, the, the financing, yes. and, and we're getting closer. So I'm hoping I can't talk about what they are yet, but I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, one of them is actually that was a post about it on Facebook. Um, it's called Trauma Land. So um, if you look on my Facebook page under Don, most people will see see that um a little bit uh, learn a little bit about it and uh it'd be a great film so i'm hoping to do that and on the acting side i just found out today i won there's a i won an award at what in new york called the the new york international film awards film yeah, new york international film awards they have it every month they get submissions from all over and um i was in a piece called um it's it's part of a series that we're trying to get going called viral vignettes and one of the episodes of viral vignettes was i did was called scrambled and i did it with a wonderful actress named gail o'grady and it was submitted and accepted into the new york for january the new york international film awards and i just found out today that i won best actor and the comedy and we won best duo me and the and gail o'grady won best uh, acting duo and I also directed that one and I won for best film for directing comedy uh, comedy so, so oh, you nice. should be like more like excited oh my goodness yeah. congratulations yeah. to you yeah, and yeah. your um cast partner that's incredible yeah yeah but, um unfortunately I can't tell people where to watch it because it's in the festivals so it's not available online yet but hopefully yeah. soon Hopefully soon. I mean, I'm working on my own thing actually, um, called Project Bullyish. It's on online bullying. Um, oh, oh, great! A documentary that I too submit. So uh, oh, wonderful. Yeah, Project, I'll send Project, you a little bit about it. <laughs> yeah, please do. Project Bullyish. Yeah, I mean, oh. I have been. Uh, there's been a lot of just uncouth. That's what we'll call them, Don. Uncouth, not very nice people. But um, I think the bigger message of online harassment, which happens to actors, musicians, a lot today with fake accounts, needs to be brought to the forefront. And yeah. um, I want to be a part of that change on doing that. Well, good. So good for I you. too am, you know. <laughs> that's wonderful that you're involved in that. Good, good for you. That's terrific. Good for you, Don. The awards, mm-hmm. though. Congratulations. Oh, thank, um, thank you. Thank, Thank you, but, you. But, but what you're doing is that's very important. So uh, kudos, big kudos to you. Kudos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don, so much, fellow redhead. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Lily Jean. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you.